don't write off little bitty things. Little bitty things got a lot of boost a lot of times. A lot more than we would give them credit for. <clears throat> They're the most powerful little critters on earth. By far bigger than your big dams and all that. Forget all that mess. In a human body, on a cellular membrane, you may have a distance of 10 to the minus 9th meters, a drop in voltage of 1 millivolt. The E field, however, is 10 to the 6th volts per meter, 1 million volts per meter, sitting at one little spot in the body. Now, that is a very strong E field. And you've got lots of those little membranes. Well, how, what does that mean for a human body? Next slide, please. The human body puts out about 10, an average human body, and this is a calculation, puts out about 10 to the 15th joules per second of energy right straight out of the vacuum. That's all those little membranes and all those little drops and all that stuff and all those little charges in the body. It itself can only intercept about 10 to the minus 13th of it and collect to use. So it puts out 10 to the 15th joules per second. That would be watts if it were actually being used. It's just energy flow now. It's not being used. It catches 10 to the minus 13th. It catches about 100 watts to use, about enough to light a light bulb. And so the human body, which puts out that enormous amount of energy, is only enough, uh, captures enough to use uh, about one light bulb power's worth. And this is real. This is for true. The rest of the energy is non-diverged. Now, for you ladies and gentlemen here that study esoteric philosophy, <clears throat> everything from ki, chi, prana, and all that stuff, I'm telling you in advance, ki, chi, prana, all that is nothing but non-diverged electromagnetic pointing energy flow. That's it. That's all it is. Well, it's awful subtle. If it don't get collected and caught, it's awful subtle, isn't it? But if you had a system where you could collect some more of it, in that pass it made through your collectors, could you not get some ordinary garden variety energy from the subtle energy? I'm translating terms between East and West. All I'm saying is I'm getting more diverged energy, which means energy is doing work, from the previously non-diverged energy. That means subtle energy is not doing any work, no physical work. So I could get a lot more physical work. Now do you know why you can bend and break metal if you get everything else just right? Or do you know how a Qigong master is able to run up on the wall and just stop about 20 feet up, hanging on the side of the wall with his bare feet and his bare hands, not holding on to anything? Not many of those guys around, but there's still a few around. Do you know how the dance troupe, which Nixon brought over from China, which had three Qigong masters in it, was able to take a wood stave in this little goozle right here in your throat, which has no muscles on it, and two guys bend the oak stick pushing against his throat and was unable to penetrate his throat. It was not a fake, ladies and gentlemen. You were dealing with a human being that spent his whole life in exercises to do one thing and one thing only, gather more of that energy and use it. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could find a way to do that without having to spend 20 years of your life sitting on a mountaintop somewhere meditating to do it? That's coming. Next slide, please. Here's the Whitaker paper that's been ignored. Every little old potential. Now, these waves, although they move up and down, are not transverse waves. That's the velocity direction. That's not your amplitude direction. Excuse me. A single little common voltage, a scalar potential, decomposes into a harmonic series of bidirectional EM wave pairs, longitudinal bidirectional pairs. Now, I'm going to tell you a magic secret Whitaker didn't know. What is a bidirectional wave pair? Maybe i got a slide on that. Let's see if i got that on the next slide. Yes, I do. If I take one pair of that and look at it, when you add a phase conjugate, let me tell you something magic. If you don't hear anything else in this whole lecture, you listen to this. Record this, you know. Wake up the old attention bug and get it going. If you add a phase conjugate replica 
to a normal transverse wave, you convert it to a longitudinal wave. The way we model waves with the two lateral oscillations, X and Y, can be either way or both or a combination. What the phase conjugate does is lock that so it can't vibrate. The only thing left is the longitudinal direction. That's one of these waves here. That's the one that was inside the Whitaker, each one. If you phase conjugate this beast again, it locks the other direction, and the only thing left to oscillate in is the time domain. Now, the photon for this is known in quantum field theory. It's in Rider quantum field theory. Check it out, 1997, I believe. What you'll find is there are four types of photons. The first two are transverse photons, oscillate X or Y, or one can be in a combination. The third type is longitudinal. It oscillates along the line of motion. And the fourth type is what they call a scalar photon. It oscillates in the time domain. Well, it is the most interesting of all, and we'll come back particularly tomorrow and show you some magic healing we can do with that, because when we want to time reverse a mass, we must pump with that wave right there. We must pump in the time domain. And we don't make longitude. We don't make time reverse waves then. We time reverse the mass that we're pumping at any frequency. Next slide, please. Think about that for an AIDS cell, for example, HIV virus. You pump, you time reverse every piece of the cell back to a previous state. Biologists would call that de-differentiation. Physicists would call it phase conjugation or time reversal. End result is the HIV virus will no longer lurk in the cell. The real problem in HIV is the continuing infected cells that already have the virus's DNA in them, the genetic material that become virus factories. You can get 99% of it, and the body does, but it doesn't get the other. And eventually that keeps changing and overcomes the body's defenses, and that leads to the eventual death of the patient. This way, by simply pumping the body with longitudinal waves, you can get every last bit of it out of there because you time reverse every cell, including all of those infected cells. Normal cell gets a little younger. Is that bad? Okay, so you lose a pretty, uh, some wrinkles on your face like. Does anybody object to that? But the ones that were already infected will time reverse back to no HIV genetic material in them. And this was done in France not for HIV. They didn't have it then. They didn't have the AIDS epidemic then in the 60s. It was done for cancer, done for leukemia, done for infectious diseases, and for arteriosclerosis. Next slide. Oh, excuse me. This is the one we want to use. Put that one back on. <clears throat> Whitaker 1904. This one was used. showed that you can make every wave and every electric field and all that, any kind of pattern whatsoever, by the interference of two scalar potential functions. This was the beginning of superpotential theory. Other physicists have worked in this. Dubai, for example, worked in it. Uh, McRae, several other very noted physicists. And they went away from the scalar potential. They went on up to the vector potential and things like that. But it's a scalar potential that's very interesting because you can make everything out of common voltage, if you will, everything electromagnetic, all the waves and everything, and you can make them at a distance. In that interference zone, you produce what we call today electromagnetic fields again in that zone. It arises out of the local space-time. It does not exist as wave energy at all on the way, except in these longitudinal waves buried up inside those scalar potentials. This beast will reach right through the Earth and the ocean. It has very little interaction with mass in between. But out there in the interference zone, it produces energy. Now, if I bias my transmitter chassis positive, I will produce scattering energy out there, heat. If I bias my chassis grounds negatively, I will produce convergent fields out there, which is the definition of cooling. If you want to call that electrostatic cooling, that's fine. If I pulse this thing very powerfully in the negative biased region, I will produce a cold explosion at a great distance. If I bias it positively and pulse it very hard, I will produce a hot explosion. Several nations of the world have weaponized that. I will not discuss the weapons because we want to do for healing. Next slide, please. 